Good morning, church. The Lord be with you. Good to see everyone here this morning. Thank you for carving out time to be in worship in person, or if you are viewing online, we are glad to have you. We gather to worship to glorify God and so that the people of God might be sanctified into the loving image of Jesus Christ, and that is what we will direct our attention to here in just a moment. We do have a couple of announcements. I'm going to have Jerry Fulmer make his way up front, and I'm also going to let you know that I traditionally preach in a robe and stole in this service, but today you get me in a button down and a, uh, a coat because it's breast cancer awareness uh, in the church today and breast cancer awareness throughout the month of October. I don't have a pink stole that I could wear, and I don't have a tie that matches this shirt. So that's just in all honesty, and this is the pinkest shirt that I've got. So you're going to get me in this today, and, and, and I know, William, I didn't want it to upset you that I wasn't in a robe this morning. So I wanted to make sure I, I clarified <laughs> clarify that announcement. All right, before I get too deep into our announcements, I would like to turn it over to Jerry Fulmer. Uh, it's on. First of all, uh, good to see everyone today. Uh, I, I do miss our church family when we don't get to have church, and I just appreciate seeing you and talking to you there. Uh, I, as we talked about back <laughs> earlier, uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And this month, we did take up a love offering, even though we were out of church a Sunday or two there. And this morning in the early service, uh, Ray Creekmore presented uh, the love offering to uh, Brother Andy. And I think he did, didn't he? <laughs> just make sure. If he didn't, we did call Ray and see where he is. But, uh, but we, we, I just want to thank each of you that gave. And I really want to tell Andy, we do appreciate having you here, you and your family. Uh, we're, we're so thrilled that you're here. We appreciate what you do. And uh, so far, I haven't had anything negative. I'm going to ask around and see what's going on here. But, uh, no, everything's been real positive, and we are thankful for you to be in our church, and we love you and your family, and we, uh, we hope you have many more um, years here with us. And I think we'll give him a round of applause for what he does. Pleasant Hill family, you are more than gracious, and we are grateful to be here partnering in ministry with you. You are a fantastic church. My family feels blessed and called to be here, and we're looking forward to many, many years of ministry together with you. We are grateful, and thank you for making us feel most welcome. And yes, Ray did uh, present the love offering uh, this morning. I haven't looked at it, but he told me the check is made out to my wife, (laughs) which I I told him was good and proper. That that probably needs to be standard procedure, so that works out really well. So from our family to, to, to each and every one of you and each and every one of you online, thank you. We feel very appreciated, and we're appreciative to be here. A couple of announcements. Yard sale on November 13th from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Last day to drop off stuff will be... November the 11th, November the 11th, last day to drop off for the yard sale on the 13th. There is a chicken stew Saturday, October 14th from 7 a.m. until noon. Uh, You can see this announcement in your bulletin, but Dennis said that they could use a couple of extra volunteers. So please see Dennis or call the church office to uh, make sure that we have enough people to cover that. There's also a chicken fundraiser going on. Um, I'm new to this, but I will tell you I like chicken a lot. So um, there's a chicken fundraiser going on, so I'm going to pay attention to that. You can go to the church website, ph.church, and you can click on the things that you need. Pre-sales run until Sunday, November the 8th at midnight. So if you would like to be a part of that, go online and register. You can also tell folks out in the community uh, that they can be a part of this just by ordering online, and that will help us out as well. Um, Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. And I would like for us to celebrate and remember the saints that have run the good race and finished their race and now celebrate and cheer us on as a great cloud of witnesses. If you have a saint in your life that has gone on to receive their eternal reward, please bring a picture. Next week, I would like for us to set their pictures up on the altar Uh, to remind us that we are part of a cloud of witnesses, that uh, they are cheering us on, that we are one in Christ, and thanks be to God, due to resurrection, we're one in Christ, and that means one in Christ, whether dead or alive. So if you would, bring a picture, and we will celebrate together as we begin a new sermon series next week entitled Saints and Sinners. Do we have any of those present with us this morning? 
So I look forward to that and joining together in that new sermon series. Bring a picture of your saint next week, and we will present those on the altar, and we will celebrate them. Uh, And I think that is all the announcements that I have this morning. Save this. Hear this word of good news. God loves you, and so do we. Welcome to worship at Pleasant Hill United Methodist Church. We're thankful that you are here. All who are able, please stand as we join together in our call to worship and our lighting of the candles. seated. We come to the time in our worship service where we bring our prayer requests and our praises before God. We call one another into prayer, hanging around our neck like a millstone, and as well, those things that have brought us in here this morning, dancing with great joy for all that God has offered us and done for us. So do you have any names that you would like to lift up to God in prayer this morning? Remember Cindy Jeffs and Kyle Clemens in your prayers as well. Do we have any praise reports? That's correct. That is one to be in prayer for. Jimmy Hayes uh, with a pick line tomorrow morning. Any other praises? Any unspoken prayer requests you'd like to be made known by the uplifted hand? God sees that hand and knows the heart and is attentive to hear and respond. Let's pray together. Patient God, we find it so easy to give lip service to the commandment to love. We can say we know of your love and that we respond in kind, but we far too often do not respond in the most loving ways toward each other. Dig deeper into our souls, O God. Expose the selfishness and fear that sometimes blocks true discipleship. 
engage us in ministries of justice, free us and inspire us to love all persons, those whom we would deem unlovable and those whom we find it easy to love. Help us love ourselves, respecting ourselves in gratitude for the gifts that you have given to us. Then move us to use these gifts in your service. Hear our prayer, O Lord, just as you have heard the names and situations that we have raised to your attentive ear. Pour out your love and healing on those who need it most and use us to help make the lives of those who are on our hearts and minds better, easier, and more full of love. These things we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All who are able, please stand for our next hymn of praise, Rescue the Perishing. Please remain standing for our scripture reading this morning from Exodus chapter 34. The Lord said to Moses, cut two stone tablets like the first ones. I'll write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke into pieces. Get ready in the morning and come up to Mount Sinai. Stand there on top of the mountain in front of me. No one else can come up with you. Don't allow anyone even to be seen anywhere on the mountain. Don't even let sheep or cattle graze in front of the mountain. So Moses cut the two stone tablets like the first ones. He got up early in the morning and climbed up Mount Sinai, just as the Lord had commanded him. He carried the two stone tablets in his hands. The Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed the name the Lord. The Lord passed in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God who is compassionate and merciful, very patient full of great loyalty and faithfulness, showing great loyalty to a thousand generations, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion, yet by no means clearing the guilty, punishing for their parents' sins, their children, their grandchildren, as well as the third and fourth generation. At once Moses bowed to the ground and worshipped. He said, If you approve of me, my Lord, please go along with us, although these are stubborn people. Forgive our guilt and our sin and take us as your own possession. The Lord said, I now make a covenant in front of all your people. I'll perform dramatic displays of power that have never been done before anywhere on earth or in any nation. All the people who are around you will see what the Lord does because I will do an awesome thing with you. 
Be sure to obey what I command you today. I'm about to drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Be careful that you don't make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you are going, for it will become a dangerous trap for you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Congregation, you may be seated during our hymn of reflection. Janet attended a prominent, well-known church in a small town. I'd been acquainted with the church for a couple of years. I knew the church, I knew its congregants, and I knew the small town pretty well. Tom and Janet were faithful attenders of this church. They sang in the choir. They collected money and counted the money after worship service. Tom and Janet were also prominent in the community. They were local business owners of a very successful local business, and, you know, being prominent in a small town is good. Being well-known in a prominent small-town church is good until it's not good. And it became not good for Tom and Janet the day that it was discovered that when they would steal away to the back room to count the Sunday morning tithes and offerings, they were taking loose cash out of the offering plates, and they were stealing from the church. They had made a covenant with this church. They had made a covenant to serve faithfully, to be honest, and to never, ever, ever steal from God. That covenant was now broken. The wrath and judgment of many in a small town, you know how small town folk can be, right? The wrath and judgment of many small town folk was about to fall. How could they do this? Who do they think they are? Are they even Christian or are they just in this for the money? Liars, thieves, and deceivers. You can hear it. You can hear the congregation as it echoes through the phone lines or the parking lot conversations of the prominent small town church faithful. Well, here's how this situation played out. Tom and Janet had to meet with the leadership team. They had to confess what they did, and they had to resign and covenant to never be part of the money-counting team again. And then they had to stand before their congregation. 
and they had to publicly apologize for what they had done. They had to own up for what they did. They couldn't sweep it under the rug. They could not hide from it. They simply offered an apology, no justification for what they did, simply apologize and acknowledge what they did. Then they must stand there and wait on either wrath and judgment to fall or words of forgiveness to come from their fellow brothers and sisters of the church. Do you feel the heaviness of the moment? Do you feel the sorrow for the guilty party? Do you feel the judgmental stares from those who had been betrayed and stolen from? Do you feel the wrath welling up in those who could not believe someone would do such a thing? Then they offer their apology. Do you feel forgiveness? beginning to flow across the room from one person to the next? Do you feel judgmental glances giving way to tears of forgiveness? Do you feel the weight being lifted? Can you feel the covenant between Tom and Janet and their church being restored? I hope you can because that's what happened. Yeah, they were held accountable for what they did. They couldn't shy away from it. But in the end, they were forgiven. And their covenant relationship with their church was restored. Stories like Tom and Janet's story remind us that covenants invite us into a new existence. A relational existence between us and others, us and others. God, us and one another as a church family. Covenants invite us into a new existence. They are binding and should not be broken. However, as broken people, brokenness will occur. And when, not if, when it does, if at all possible, may we leave room for grace. Moses finds himself in the midst of yet another honest conversation with God. It's a very real conversation. It's a very tense conversation because the people of God have broken covenant with God. You know, the covenant that began with these words, I'm the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods besides me, and you shall not fashion for yourself images that try to tame the untamable power of God. You know what covenant I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it's that covenant. They broke it right off the bat, right? Moses hadn't even come off the mountain yet, and they make for themselves an idol in the image of a bull calf. God is infuriated. How could they do that? Who did they think they are? Then if you were with us last week, you know that Moses stepped up and he had an honest conversation with God. And God kind of showed God's rage. And Moses said, look, God, I'm thankful that you'll go with me, but all these people are your people. You called all of us out of Egypt, and all of us need your power and presence to go with us. That's the only thing that distinguishes us from every other tribe on earth. Here we find Moses and God in the midst of another honest conversation, one in which God's voice dominates. So God comes onto the scene and says, Moses, you go cut two stone tablets. You broke the last ones that I provided you with, so now it's fair that you go cut these things out. Bring them to the top of the mountain. Don't let anyone come with you. Don't even let your livestock graze on the mountain. I've got a thing or two I want to say to you. Do you feel the heaviness of the moment? Do you feel the reality of the moment Moses is being called to stand between God's wrath and the people who broke covenant? The truth is going to have to be told, an apology is going to have to be made, and then either wrath or grace is going to follow. I bet Moses was scared to death. Can you blame him? But he does what he's told, right? He goes and cuts the tablets, and then he takes off up the mountain, and then the cloud image of God descends upon the mountain, and it's about to get real. The voice of God speaks, and listen to what God says. I am the Lord, a God who is compassionate and merciful, very patient 
full of great loyalty and faithfulness, showing great loyalty to a thousand generations, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion, yet by no means clearing the guilty, punishing for their parents' sins, their children, their grandchildren, as well as the third and fourth generation. This is a powerful moment in Scripture, church. This is God literally describing God's self to us. There's no guesswork here. God is telling us exactly who God is. And notice that when God self-describes, God begins with grace-filled language. If you have your mask on, I want you to repeat these words out loud with me so that you can get an image of how God is describing God's self. If you don't have your mask on, just mouth the words or whisper them uh, so that we can do this safely. Repeat these words after me. Here's how God describes God's self. Compassionate. Merciful, patient, loyal, faithful, forgiving. That's God. That is how God self-identifies. But then God says, that is who I am, but there's also another side to me. God goes on to put everyone on notice that even though God is first and foremost all of these gracious things, God is also a God who does not flippantly clear the guilty, right? God punishes and will continue punishing if necessary for generations to come until the change that needs to happen actually happens. It's an incredible moment. Don't let this moment in Scripture pass you by. This is God telling Moses, the people of Israel, and all of us who are lucky enough to inherit the scriptures from the ancient ones, exactly who God is. And here's how God self-describes. God is a God so complete in showing love to everyone that if necessary, God's love will turn to judgment in order to enact loving change that needs to happen to make the world a better place and so that God is glorified. That is how God self-identifies. That's who God is. That's the God that we serve, and that's the God that Moses stands before at this time, guilty as sin. God self-identifies in such a way, and Moses has only one option after that. He falls flat on his face and worships. Would any of us have a different response? Probably not. I would fall flat on my face too. And all Moses can do at this point is say, God, we are an obstinate and defiant people. Forgive us our sins. Take us back to be your covenant people. And then Moses shuts up and says nothing else and waits for God to respond either through judgment and wrath or through grace and forgiveness. True to God's self-identification of God's self, God defaults to God's dominant attributes, which is grace and forgiveness. God decides that even though the people are stubborn and they are obstinate, God will in fact be their God and God will do awesome acts on their behalf. God will drive out the inhabitants of the land so that God's children could enter into it. That's part of God's, that is the part of the covenant that belongs to God. God will be their God. God will protect them and God will take them back as God's covenant people. God's power will be their power. Their part of the covenant now is this, obey God's commandments, and don't enter into any other covenant with any other people because it will be a trap for you. Of all the ways that God could have responded to this situation, God chose grace and forgiveness. The people of God had broken covenant with God. Their representative Moses is standing before God, guilty as charged. He owned up to what the people had done. It couldn't be swept under the rug. It couldn't be shied away from. It could not be talked away. It was what it was. It was guilt. It was sin. It was an abomination. All Moses could do was apologize before God and say, forgive us our sins. And at this point, God decides to respond with grace and forgiveness. Instead of the wrath that God had initially intended, 
God is so moved that God's response is graciousness. You see, church, God is serious about God's covenants with God's people. God loves God's people. And God models for us how covenants and the restoration of broken covenants is supposed to work. And God models for us that covenants call us into a new existence, a new existence with God, one another as a church, and with the world. And covenants are binding and should not be broken, but as broken people, brokenness will occur. And when it does, if at all possible, may we leave room for grace. We began this sermon series called Church Realities back at the beginning of the month, and we looked at the Ten Commandments. But we flipped them on their head. We, instead of simply looking at them through a series of thou shalt nots, we looked at them as a series of thou shalls and reminding us that God has called God's people to be a thou shall kind of people. And then, after that, we looked at a few of our baptismal covenant vows. And on this Sunday, as we look at covenant, or more accurately, the restoration of broken covenants, I would like for us to revisit and reaffirm our baptismal covenant with one another and with God. Our baptismal covenant is one of our greatest church realities for it spells out to us who we are in relation to God, one another, and the rest of the world. So if you're one of the ones worshiping with us online, uh, steal away for just a moment to your kitchen to get a little bowl of water. It doesn't have to be fancy, not a whole lot of water. Um, when everyone else comes forward, I'll pour water on their hands. You simply dip your hand into the water and remember your baptism and be thankful. But I want you to have something tangible that you can feel and be reminded that God has washed away our sin and made us God's covenant people by water and the Spirit. To those of you worshiping here, if you are a baptized member of this congregation... I would like for you to verbally renew your baptismal covenant here in just a few minutes. Then I'm going to call you forward, and you can take a remembrance stone, and then over this glass bowl, if you'll just cup your hands, I'm going to pour a little bit of water, and you can just let it drop into the, into the bowl, and I want you to remember your baptism and be thankful. Take that remembrance stone and put it in your pocket. Take it home. You can put it on your nightstand. Then tomorrow when you get ready for work or to go play golf or whatever it is that you do during the day, you can take that stone with you. And every time you put your hand in your pocket or in your purse, ladies, or whatever, and you touch that stone, you can be reminded that God has washed away your sins and you have been born anew as God's people by water and the Spirit. And you can be thankful. If you are worshiping with us this morning and you're not a baptized member of our congregation, whether here in person or online, read along with what it is that we're covenanting together to do. If this sounds like the kind of people you want to be a part of, grab me after the service. I'd love to talk to you about the sacrament of baptism. If you're worshiping online, call the church office. Go to our website and then call the church office. We'll set up a time to get together. I would love to talk with everyone about the sacrament of baptism And how God washes away our sins and makes a covenant with us by water and the Spirit and sets us apart as God's people. It is a beautiful and powerful moment. It's a covenant with God, each other, and the rest of the world that reminds us that covenants call us into a new existence. Their binding should not be broken. But as broken people, brokenness will occur. And when it does, if at all possible, may we leave room for grace. This morning, we are going to renew our baptismal covenant because I'm sure at some point along the way, as broken people, we have broken covenant with God and one another. God is still calling us into a gracious space of forgiveness as we should with one another. May our renewal of the baptismal covenant call us to that this morning. Hear these words. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our covenant.
commitment to Christ's holy church. Please pray with me. Living God, when the Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism in Jordan's water, you revealed him as your own beloved Son. You anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior now and forever. Amen. Church, I'm going to ask you a few questions and I'm going to ask you to respond out loud to these questions. Your response should be printed in bold. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages? Nations and races, if so, say, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. And now, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. Your response is printed in bold. Do you believe in God, the eternal, the creator? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Let's offer our thanks to God. Creator God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All those worshiping online, if you would, simply dip your hand in the bowl or the cup of water that you have and remember your baptism and be thankful. And may the Holy Spirit be at work in you, having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. To all of those here, I'm going to start with William and Sheila. If, if Start with their row. If you would like to remember your baptism... Come up, grab a remembrance stone, cup your hands over the bowl. I'll pour a little water over your hands and offer the liturgy and the blessing.
We'll just continue down this side of the church. Now we'll start on this side of the church. the Holy Spirit work within you, having been born by water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our baptismal covenant has been renewed. As God's restored people, God's covenant people, May God's grace flow to us, through us, and into a broken world so that the broken lives of others might be made whole. When brokenness occurs within our own ranks, may we leave room for grace, just as we cry out to God when our brokenness creates distance between us and God. God would indeed leave room for grace, which God has proven to us this morning. That's God's desire.
Remember, church, that covenants invite us into a new existence with God, with one another, and with the world. Covenants are binding and should not be broken. However, as broken people, brokenness will occur. When it does, if at all possible, may we be diligent and faithful to leave room for grace. And together, the people of God rejoice in saying, Amen. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Hang on one second while I mute my microphone. Sometimes you just become so accustomed to the mask you forget to take it off. But it's Breast Cancer uh, Awareness Month, and many of us are wearing pink or as pink of a shirt as, as we own. And this is just a small way that we can call attention to a devastating illness. If you have fought this illness, some of you might have fought it and beaten it more than once. We rejoice with you. If you're currently fighting, keep fighting the good fight. We're praying with you. And if you have lost a loved one due to this dreaded disease or complications thereof, know that we join together with you in praying for you and crying with you and longing for the day that we can one day say with joy that all of creation is cancer free. But until that day, sometimes it helps just to call out a few names and to enter into a time of prayer. So hear these names. Susan Edmondson, Teresa Fox, Grace Lawson, Mary Wells, Suzanne Duncan, Haley Heipel, Deb Miles, Sarah Hayes, Rose White, Gail Milligan, Kathy Talcott, Pat Huckaba, Kathy Everett, Cindy Jeffs, Janice Rhodes, Dottie Cook, Melissa Johnson, Mary McLaughlin, Lisa Boyle, Barbara Jean Perkins, Nancy Luschner, Pam Spangler, Sandra Baskins, Janice Cunningham. You may. Deborah Creasy, are there any other names you would like to lift up in relation to breast cancer awareness? Please pray with me. God, thank you for hearing the prayers of your people. Thank you for turning your attentive ear to us. Thank you for hearing the names we've lifted up. Thank you for being present in the situations of those who have fought breast cancer and won and those that are currently fighting. May they keep fighting the good fight. And thank you for hearing the cries of your people when we are sorrowful that our loved ones have died to such an unnecessary and horrible disease. God, hear our prayers and move us swiftly to the time when all of your creation is joyfully cancer-free. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. And together, the people of God said, Amen. All who are able, please stand and join us in our closing hymn, number 398, Jesus Calls Us. And while we are singing this, if you need to come and get a little bit of honest time before God and the covenant that you have with God and that God's made on your life, the altar is open for you while we sing.
don't forget, next week is All Saints Sunday. Bring a picture of a saint or two from your life. We'll put them up on the altar. We'll light some candles and remember them as we delve into a new series called Sinners and Saints. Now receive the benediction. Before we do, remember as you leave the um, sanctuary, there are offering plates here uh, for you to put your tithes and offerings in so that we may continue mission and ministry here in the church and out into the world. Now receive the benediction, church. Covenants invite us into a new existence. They're binding and should not be broken. However, as broken people, brokenness will occur. When it does, if at all possible, may we leave room for grace. This week, leave room for grace by making an attempt to restore a broken relationship or covenant with someone. And as you go forth into the world to love and serve God, go knowing that the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with each of you always. And together, God's people said, Amen. Thank you.